Hi, in today's video, we are bringing two worlds together again, the North American 120 volt world and the other the 230 volt part of the world. We will talk about a very common misunderstanding which each of the two worlds seems to have about each other. And this is about uh, leakage current protection. We are talking about RCDs and GFCIs. And why we have to talk about this? Uh, this is because if you read some forums about this, you will actually see that people are completely misunderstanding each other. If you ask somebody in Northern America what he thinks about RCDs, he will tell you uh, actually that people who are using RCDs are essentially killing uh, themselves. But today I'm going to show you that each of those two sides are protecting humans when interacting with electrical systems. Okay, let's uh, look into the details and see what I'm talking about. So RCDs or GFCIs are standard protection devices which are mandatory to be installed in most countries of the world already for more than three decades probably. And there's still a misconception between uh, parts of the world how those devices are protecting people. And especially when it comes to compare the Northern American system with the uh, other uh, countries which using 230 volts, this misconception or misunderstanding actually comes because people mostly see the devices they hold in their hands when they go and shop uh, for them in their country, of course. So when it comes to Northern America, we have the so-called GFCIs and those GFCIs rated for very low uh, leakage currents. So a standard GFCI is five milliamps leakage current. And then they have different ones. They are called equipment protective devices. And those are, for example, rated for 30 milliamps. So if now a person in Northern America sees that the rest of the world is using 30 milliamp RCDs in their homes and their 30 milliamp RCDs, which they can buy in Northern America, is a equipment protective device, then they think probably, okay, rest, the rest of the world is only protecting equipment with their RCDs and not actually protecting people from shocking themselves. Why the shocking aspect in this is actually coming uh, from the from this one that uh, it depends on the current which is flowing over the human how you experience electricity. So when it comes to the leakage current of 30 amps 30 amps actually is already a such a high leakage current that if a person goes and grabs a conductor, electric conductor, the threshold for letting go the hand from that conductor is already actually overstepped. The person which is holding a conductor can actually not let the hand go anymore when the leakage current is 30 milliamps. And that is the reason why probably people in Northern America will think that an RCD is actually not protecting humans. But why this is not like that, I will just show you now. So when it comes to protecting a human of getting shocked by causing a leakage current, it all depends about the design of your uh, protective earth system, of course. And how is that designed usually? 
we will have somewhere a point of grounding. So this in a grid setup, this is at the transformer. If we are talking about off-grid installation, we want to make this at our off-grid inverter. And this is enabling a ground fault loop. So if a human by accident touches a hot wire, current will flow over the human, over the ground, back to the grounding rod of our power source, go into the neutral there and the circuit is closed. So how does this look in a 230 volt system? The human, if he touches a hot wire with his hand and the current will pass through his foot, normally will have a standard resistance at around 1000 ohms. And then we have a second resistance. In this case, it is called the impedance of the grounding earthing system. So let's say that one is as well 1000 ohms. We have a total resistance here of 2000 ohms. If we now divide the voltage through 2000, then we will see if the human is causing a ground leakage, it will cause a 115 milliamp leakage in that system. So 115 milliamp, which will actually be caused against 30 milliamp RCD. How does this look in the 120 volt system, which is protected by a 5 milliamp GFCI? We have the 1000 ohms resistance of the human, same to that one. We have our impedance 1000 ohms on our grounding system. 120 divided by 2000 equals to 60 milliamp leakage current. So 60 milliamp against 5 milliamp. So as you can see, in both cases, the RCD tripping current is always much, much lower than the actual the current which will actually occur. It is not the value of the uh, leakage current which is protecting the human most. What is protecting the human is how fast the RCD or the GFCI is disconnecting the circuit. Okay, so now we have a second aspect of how actually our system will behave when a human actually interacts with a hot wire here as well. In the 230 volt world is typically using a central RCD and then you will have the individual circuits behind the RCD going to the appliances. Northern America, you have a receptacle socket or you have a GFCI breaker, but each of these is typically connecting to one circuit and one appliance behind on maximum, maybe two. So when we talking about appliances, many appliances will actually leak current from a hot to ground. This comes from capacitive effects, typically uh, appliances which are leaking a lot of uh, current. Those are like switching power supplies and these kind of things. What actually happens if I have many, many circuits, right? If I have multiple circuits behind the RCD and I have multiple appliances behind that RCD. So the maximum allowed leakage current per appliance usually is somewhere at 0 0.5 milliamps. I have a lot of appliances, let's say we have 10 of them. So my leakage current behind that RCD coming from appliances is already 
5 milliamps. So that will reduce the active range of this RCD already by 5 milliamps. So how much leakage current does a human have to add to trip that RCD? Well, in this case, maybe 25 milliamps. When we look at the GFCI circuit, we have 5 milliamps, one appliance, 0 0.5 milliamps. So in this case, extra leakage current has to be around 4.5 milliamps. So you can see that uh, the more appliances you have, on one side you have to, of course, be aware that uh, if there's too many circuits behind the RCD, too many appliances, that RCD could trip and we actually don't want it to trip yet. So in this case, it might be even necessary sometimes to split the circuit into two RCD circuits or more. This problem we do not have with uh, GFCIs because, as I said, typically one GFCI will only be there for one appliance, one circuit. As you can see, it is not just North America which wants to protect their people from getting shocked. It's of course all humans want to be protected of dangers of electrical systems and just by seeing a certain number written on a device that does not mean that that device is unsafe. Right, so I hope that this video is clearing up some misunderstandings between uh, certain regions of the world. You have to be aware that all these protective devices have been designed to give a maximum amount of safety for the operators, for the humans behind. Okay, so that was already it for today. Thank you for watching this video. Please comment, like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.